Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today, I have a video for you where I'm bringing it back to basics and really just want to explain what data pipelines are, what they do for beginners, so that everyone can understand why data pipelines are so important, what they do, you know, how they operate, the different you know, services involved in them, and then also how they're powering most of the world around you. Um, you might not think it, but every time you know you make a search on Netflix or you buy something on Amazon or you even just click on an ad, the operations that are giving you a recommendation of what to buy or what to watch or what ad to serve you, that's all handled by different types of data pipelines. Um, so that's what I'm gonna show you today is what are those different types of data pipelines um, and really just give you everything you need to know to understand how data moves behind the scenes throughout the world. Um, so I hope you enjoy this video. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I want to go over is really just what is a data pipeline at its most basic you know, dictionary definition. Um, and it's a structured series of processes that collect, process, and store data. Um, so you can see a very simple example right here um, that you see basically the flow of data between different systems in a structured way where you have many different systems that are working together. You know, you're pulling data from, let's say, a website. You're storing it in a data warehouse and maybe it's powering a report um, or you're doing some transformations even just within that data warehouse. Um, and the primary goal of data pipelines are automating data movement and processing. So you don't have to do things like it was in the old days where if you wanted to get data and process it and you know, generate a report, someone would have to go get that data, manually make those changes, do that, those transformations manually, so there's no kind of automation, uh, and then produce that report. Um, and if you want another report, great, you had to go do that again for that same set of data, for a different set of data. Um, and so pipe, data pipelines are really one of the foundational aspects of the modern data verse. Um, and what allowed you know, large-scale data movement. Because as you can imagine, you can only have so many people whose job it is to actually manually move data. Automating this allows you to know you not only have a couple dozen data pipelines for your business, but thousands, tens of thousands, even millions of data pipelines. That's what you know, this, companies like Walmart, like really large enterprises are doing, is you, know, you have millions of data pipelines that are powering a global business. And generally, data pipelines fall into two different approaches. So you either have extract, transform, load, an ETL pipeline, where data is first extracted from your sources, then it's transformed into a clean and structured format in some kind of staging area. This could be an application like Airflow. This could be an S3 bucket, some object storage, um, really anything that isn't a data warehouse. Um, and then finally, that data, once it's transformed and prepared, it's loaded into a data warehouse. The other flip side, and this is something where a lot of data pipelines are moving towards, is ELT pipelines. Um, and so an ELT pipeline, this is actually flipped. And so here you have the data is extracted in its raw format into that data warehouse, and then you make use of that data warehouse to actually transform the data where it lives within the data warehouse. Uh, and this is the direction a lot of really large enterprises are going, uh, because now data warehouses are really efficient and really cheap to do these kind of large scale transformations and queries. Before, it wasn't as you know, computationally expensive and you would you know, run out your computer budget if you were trying to do all these transformations within your data warehouse. Now it's actually more efficient because you have things like Snowflake, Redshift, BigQuery, where you can manipulate large amounts of data within those data warehouses at a very low cost. Now within data pipelines, there are typically a few key components. Number one, uh, and this is kind of an obvious one, but some people don't think about it, uh, is data sources. You need to have sources where you're pulling data from. Uh, typically, these are things like databases, uh, whether SQL or NoSQL based, you know, MySQL or MongoDB. Um, also, a lot of times, APIs, web services, you know, hitting a REST API that gets pulls some data from an external application server. Um, you might be receiving files and logs um, from different applications being sent to you. So CSVs, JSON, log streams. Uh, you also might be using event streams. Um, there are tools like Apache Kafka that essentially have agents that will sit and listen for events from an application. And then every time a new piece of data is created, that data will then be processed. And so that's if you're doing real time event streaming. And we'll talk about the differences there in a, uh, in a little bit later. Um, then you also have IoT devices and sensors, another really common source of data where you have sensors, devices that are constantly emitting data around the real world. Then you have the data ingestion layer. Um, and this is where you're taking that raw data and feeding that data into a pipeline, into a database, 
Um, and this can either be happening, you know, through batch processing. So you have data that's collected at scheduled intervals. So, you know, things like airflow, um, like Airbyte, Talent, um, things where it's saying, hey, every hour I want to get all the data from this application and then upload it into a database or upload it into a staging area. The other alternative, the one I talked about with Apache Kafka, is stream processing. And so that's where the second a new data point is produced, that data point then gets processed, it gets transformed. You know, So if let's say it's what is George's name and it wants to drop the last name, uh, it'll drop my last name and then just upload that first name into that database in a very simple example. Um, and then once you've ingested the data into wherever you're gonna do transformations on it, so whether you're doing ETL or ELT, you're then going to you know, transform your raw data into a usable format. Very rarely does the raw data from applications actually work really well for things like analytics or machine learning. You're gonna need to do things like data cleaning, where you'll move duplicates, handle missing values, correcting data types. <coughs> um, also things like data enrichment, um, adding metadata, so you, things like tags, so you can understand the data or other people can understand the data better. Um, combining sources, so combining different sets of data into one large data set through aggregation. Um, also things like filtering data. Maybe you wanna drop any duplicates, any data that doesn't have every field filled out, um, any null values. Um, and then also doing things like transformation. Uh, maybe you wanna change some strings, some words to actually character values, or you want to change some numbers into string values, or you wanna apply some business rules and only get information about people that have spent over $100 on your platform. That's all gonna happen in that data processing layer. Then you have the data storage step. And if you're using an ELT motion, uh, that data storage step might actually occur after or at the data ingestion layer. Uh, but no matter what, your data is eventually coming into a storage system and that will be something like a data warehouse, like Snowflake, BigQuery, Redshift, Postgres, uh, or a data lake, more unstructured data. So things that can handle you know, audio and video files, and that could be Amazon S3 buckets or Azure uh, data lake, um, really any kind of object storage uh, with a data lake layer on top of it. Uh, then you also have NoSQL databases like MongoDB, DynamoDB, and graph databases for relationship-driven data. Um, then once you have you know, your data, data storage, you also have kind of throughout this entire pipeline, monitoring and orchestration. Um, you need tools that can allow all of these different systems to work together and can coordinate, hey, pull from this API at this time, upload it into this intermediary data storage area, then bring it to a database and run some transformations on it. Um, the, pretty much the standard gold standard out there is Apache Airflow. Um, there are some other alternatives like Daxter or Prefect, but I would say really the kind of enterprise grade standard for workflow and data pipeline management has become Apache Airflow. Um, and then you're also doing things like monitoring and logging every step of this data pipeline to catch any errors or anything that might occur uh, within the data pipeline that you want to alert on and say, hey, this is where this error came from. Here's where you go to fix it. Uh, this is using tools like Elasticsearch, like Kibana for logging errors and failures, performance monitoring, using things like Grafana um, or Datadog for like alerting and you know incident response. Um, then you also have data analysis and data visualization. So at the end of the day, you want to use your data. Um, and one of the most common use cases for data is providing analysis um, of that data to some business stakeholders through you know business intelligence tools like Tableau, like Power BI, like Looker. Um, also now. AI and machine learning, this really, you know, data analysis, it almost is hand in hand with AI. Uh, if you're doing data analysis, you're doing it with AI and machine learning now. Um, and so that data that's been transformed, a lot of these data pipelines are now powering those AI workflows that are helping drive a lot of modern businesses. Um, and that's the general flow of most data pipelines. You know, you might have some exotic components or different steps, um, or you're using a wholly different tech, totally different tech stack, but these are generally the different steps that almost every data pipeline is going to take in one form or another. So now that we know kind of the different steps, the different components of a data pipeline, I wanna talk about what are the different types of data pipelines. So in my view, there are really three main types of data pipelines. Um, you have batch processing pipelines, streaming pipelines, and data integration pipelines. So batch processing pipelines are kind of the typical data processing, hey, take a data set, apply some transformations, apply some rules, then upload it into a database or upload it in a database and then apply the transformations of the rules and then use that data for some downstream source, whether it's AI, whether it's ML, whether it's data analytics. Then Conversely, you have something like streaming pipelines. And the end use cases are the same. You know, you're using these to power uh, analytics, but it's more about, hey, I need to have second by second 
really granular understanding of what's happening within the system. So streaming pipelines means every single time you produce a new data point, that data point then gets processed and added to a system. And you know, so this is typically really useful for cases like fraud detection, where every time a bank has a transaction, they want to take that transaction, apply it through you know, their ML uh, fraud detection systems, make sure that it isn't using anything illegal before eventually you know, accepting that transaction um, and you know, obviously, if there is anything fraudulent, getting an alert at the point of that transaction, that's where something you know, you'd want to receive that alert when they're trying to make the transaction so you can deny it, not uh, you know, wait for, hey, every day I want to get a report of all the different fraudulent transactions. So you let them go through and they have to you know, kind of track them. Uh, additionally, things like social media monitoring, um, you know, if you have a web scraper that's saying, hey, check every Twitter post and then based on the sentiment, do something. Um, that's a pretty typical like finance use case. Um, and then the third type of data pipeline is data integration pipelines. Um, and the reason why I think this is kind of a broken out segment is this is things that, you know, hey, I'm not batch processing or stream processing data for the sake of analysis or kind of, you know, feeding into some system to analyze or, you know, to alert on. Data integration is more, you know, moving the data throughout my business um, or just doing basic collection. Um, a good example of something like this is, hey, I actually, uh, you know, a, a company like Amazon, uh, it, you know, when you fill out a form and you say, hey, uh, I want to search for a new blouse, um, data integration pipeline recently says, hey, take this data, uh, feed it in this machine learning model, tell me what this person should buy, um, and then feed that result back to that person. Um, so that's, you know, one kind of example of a data integration pipeline, or just if you need to move data between different systems for just, you know, kind of application support purposes, uh, making sure your tool can run online on time. You know, it's not really batch processing or streaming. It's really just, you know, hey, hey, this tool needs to consume data from this other tool. So I need to integrate them. And that's really why I kind of have them as a third category. But I'd say most pipelines fall into either that batch processing or streaming category. So now I just want to finish this video with kind of talking about some real world applications of data pipelines, Ta starting with the one you see up on screen. So this is a real Netflix internal diagram of how they actually manage serving people, uh, serving data or videos to all the different many Netflix users. Um, and you can see Netflix specifically for streaming service uses data pipelines to drive content recommendations, do analysis on, hey, what are users watching? Um, to recommend them other things to watch, to keep them on the platform. Um, and really any kind of streaming platform, any kind of you know, consumption of media is gonna use this. You're gonna have things like Spotify, Netflix, you know, all, it, Disney Plus, all of those are all uh, streaming services that you know, would all use data pipelines similar to this one. Additionally, you have things like e-commerce. They're similarly using th data pipelines to serve personalized recommendations, do things like dynamic pricing. If they detect a lot of people demanding a certain product, they'll actually use data pipelines, and this is where stream processing comes in, to increase the price of that product. Um, you also have companies in the finance industry. You know, I talked about this before, doing things like fraud detection with data pipelines, you know, things like risk assessment. Hey, I want to decide whether or not I'm going to lend to this person. You know, when you file a uh, application for a credit card, it's not really a person that's assessing it nowadays. It goes through a sequence of data pipelines that gets processed, assigns you a score, and based on that score, you're then approved or denied for that credit card. Um, healthcare is also another big data pipeline industry. Um, that's where you're integrating pa patient data health, providing real-time diagnostics on, hey, how is this patient doing? Um, and then also another big user and kind of a classic, like, hey, how do we solve this problem user is logistics, um, you know, route optimization, doing using data pipelines to understand what the current traffic situation is like, um, and then rerouting drivers to use routes that are kind of saving them the most time. Um, so it's really whatever company you can think of probably uses data pipelines in some way to power their business. Um, so. That's really all I wanted to cover today, just really give you a one-on-one course on how data pipelines are used across the world. Hope this was helpful. I hope it hit the mark and you now know a little bit more about how data pipelines work. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.